Well, greetings one and all, and welcome once again to Tom's Hit Parade. Although not live this time, this is a pre-recorded video, uh, as will also be the next one I'm going to uh, bring you later on this week. Uh, I'm So yes, you won't see me reacting to a live chat window because there is no live chat window to react to. Uh, I might do this video as a premiere, uh, so there might be, you know, a kind of a chat thing going on, and although if I do that, I may not be able to participate in it because I don't know where exactly I will be when I decide to uh, unleash this video on y'all. Uh, yes, I'm going to be away on a little trip out to Oklahoma to be at uh, my little brother's, my best friend's wedding. I'm going to be a groomsman at his wedding, so very excited for that. So yes, I thought I would put some content on reserve for you in the form of pre-recorded videos. Uh, I plan to drop this one on March 10th and the next one on March 15th. Uh, but even though they are pre-recorded videos, they will still be, as you can tell through this video, they're still going to be very much in the style of my live streams uh, because, first of all, I, I've i kind of uh, gotten over the, uh, you know, the, the... the honeymoon is over, so to speak, with the editing of videos. I've uh, Not only do I get kind of obsessive with editing things precisely, it just takes up so much time, even if I'm just editing them kind of haphazardly. They still take up a lot of time, so... I have really come to enjoy the freedom of not having to edit videos. So, plus I just like the conversational, loose conversational style with the awkward moments, the the stumbling over my own words and that kind of stuff. Uh, it, it it just feels like much more me, you know. Much as I liked the crisp, uh, quick cut, smooth, uh, you know, nicely flowing style of videos, <clears throat> I think I'm over those. Uh, yeah, so you'll get you'll get the clearing of the throat and all that good stuff in these videos. But anyway. Uh, the subject of this video and my next one will be the next two chapters, chapters two and three, of my whole darn CD collection. Yes, I've I had lots of fun doing the first video in the series, so I thought I would just keep on doing this. Uh, yes, I'm going to be showing you every single CD I own, uh, complete with the the embarrassments, the uh, not so guilty pleasures. Well, not really embarrassments. There's nothing I'm really. Uh, ashamed to own. I guess there's some stuff that I'm mildly embarrassed of owning, but you know it's all stuff that I like enough to own on CD. So in that respect, I'm not really ashamed of any of it. So, but yeah, I just thought you just some of the things I own will probably amuse you, and some of the things will some of the things will wow you. Some of the things will huh you, I'm sure. But anyway. Uh, yes, I show about 90 CDs, uh, or 90 titles, that is, in each of my videos, uh, uh, no exception with this video. But before I start in on the next 90 CDs, I thought I would backtrack. Uh, there are three CDs uh, that would have been in Chapter 1, uh, but weren't at the time that I filmed it, because they were in my listening backlog, but I hadn't actually gotten around to listening to them until after I did that chapter, and so now that they are officially part of my CD collection, I will go ahead and mention them really quickly. Uh, first one is Paula Abdul's sophomore album, Spellbound. Uh, yes, uh, I showed you her debut album, Forever Your Girl. Uh, that one's very, very poppy, very upbeat, uh, much of a par very much of a party album. This one is much more subdued, as you can kind of tell by the cover, the, the, the darker cover. Uh, more ballads on this one and more nuanced tracks. Uh, Rush Rush and The Promise of a New Day are two of the um, noteworthy signal singles off this album. So. Very good stuff. Paula Abdul is, uh, I don't know, sometimes I think she's maybe a forgotten uh, diva of the 90s. And then we have Clay Aiken, his third album, On My Way Here. Uh, yes, I got this one at, at a thrift store a couple months ago, but as I mentioned, hadn't gotten around to listening to it until last week. And I had forgotten what a good voice Clay Aiken has. Uh, yes, a bunch, a good bunch of, uh, I believe this is all original tunes, nice mixture of upbeat songs and ballads. Uh, yes, his sophomore album was a covers album, which was very, very nice. Uh, I like that one a little bit more than I like this one, but still. Uh, very underrated, well, I don't know, I don't know if he's underrated or not, but uh, sometimes I think he should have won American Idol season two. But then uh, Ruben Stutter is not bad either. And anyway, the third uh, backtrack CD here, no, no, not backtracks, that old feature that uh, I have that's not coming back, but yes, my stepping back to chapter one, is uh, Rapture by Anita Baker. I'm pretty sure I showed you her uh, 
is it her sophomore album or her third album uh, that I already had when I filmed that part, but uh, this one I picked up at Epic Seconds last last week, a couple weeks ago. Uh, this is, I can't remember if this is her debut album or not, but fantastic uh, R&B soul diva from the late 80s, early 90s. Oh, no, actually this is from 97, so I guess maybe she didn't, didn't get started until the 90s. Hmm, I thought she was from the 80s. Anyway, uh, Sweet Love and uh, Caught Up in the Rapture, two great, great songs of hers. Wonderful, wonderful singer. So now that the... Uh, Stepping back to chapter one is over. Let's go ahead and get started with chapter two. As you recall, uh, I left off with Sarah Bareilles' uh, most recent studio album at the end of chapter one, uh, but we're not done with Sarah Bareilles yet because I also have her most recent live album, uh, Amidst the Chaos, live from the Hollywood Bowl. Oh, the light's a little bit bright. You can't see the uh, text on the CD cover, but anyway. Excellent live album. She put this out last year. Two full discs of uh, songs, and she does Pretty much my favorite song from each of her albums is on this uh, thing in a nice live rendition. And yes, at the Hollywood Bowl, of course, uh, a great, fantastic live venue. I've actually been to the Hollywood Bowl twice in my younger days, so it was a lot of fun. Although it's probably changed completely from what I what I remember it as. But anyway, yes, that so that takes care of Sarah Bareilles, and uh, the first four letters of her last name spell the word bear. So you can probably figure out what's next. Bare Naked Ladies. Uh, yes, and you might as well sit back and enjoy as I go through the uh, discography I have of Bare Naked Ladies, starting off with our debut album, Gordon. And we have... Yeah. Sophomore album, Maybe You Should Drive. Okay, maybe I need to... Hence one of the awkward moments in that you usually see my live streams. And their third album, Born on a Pirate Ship. Yay, organization. Fourth album, Stunt. And this is in the, a, uh, the deluxe uh, anniversary edition. And it also includes a DVD of their uh, documentary, Bare Naked in America, directed by and hosted by Jason Priestley. Canadian actor, famous for Beverly Hills 90210. And I had the VHS of that documentary, which I bought at a uh, blockbuster going at a business sale. I bought it on VHS and uh, almost wore it out watching it so much, so I was absolutely elated when they decided to include that DVD with the anniversary reissue of Stunt. So that's awesome. And then we have, uh, I mentioned in, you saw one of these cases in my last chapter, I had I bought an assortment of tinted CD jewel cases. I think the one I showed you was yeah it was a Backstreet Boys, black and blue. So it was a blue colored uh, case. Well, this one is a red tinted case, and it is of course housing Bare Naked Ladies maroon album. Of course, what other color a CD case would I put maroon in but red? So yes, uh, another very good album. <clears throat> now this one, it's an interesting. It's a promo CD that I got. I can't remember. I think maybe I got it at uh, Face the Music. It's a, an old CD store in Eugene that went out of business years ago. Uh, it's called Words and Music, and it is a um, interview program with clips of the songs from, this was from their uh, stunt, uh, the promotional cycle for their stunt album. And uh, yes, yeah, it was interesting. I think it was made for radio, so you know, this radio stations would, would get the CD and play the program on the air, I, I assume. And but yeah, it was it's fun. It's got you know interviews with the band members where they talk about the um, the genesis of the various songs on the album. Very very cool, very interesting. And uh, so yeah, I definitely had to keep that. Uh, it was when I had the original version of Stunt. I had that in a two disc case, and that Words and Music CD was piggybacked on the Stunt album. But now that that yeah that one's changed, I had to put this in its own jewel case. So. And then on with onward with Bare Naked Ladies discography, we have Everything to Everyone, the deluxe version of that that comes with a DVD. And then we have Bare Naked Ladies Are Me, and this is actually the Are Me and Are Men albums in a single uh, dual um, dual CD case. Yes, this is actually was uh, this edition of it was released in Canada, I believe. So yeah, there we have both of the CDs. It was very cool. 
kind of happy. I was happy to get this in uh, the two disc um, bound together edition, I should say. No extra tracks in it, but I guess I just like the convenience of having them both in the same case. I don't know. Anyway, and now on to we go with uh, to the post Stephen Page era of Bare Naked Ladies. We have All in Good Time. Found that one at uh, I rebought it from Forever Young Records in Dallas. And then Grinning Streak, uh, one of my favorite uh, of their most recent albums is Grinning Streak. Then we have Silver Ball coming up onto the next to most recent album, Fake Nudes. I love that play on the uh, the phrase fake news. And then they've, they've been really clever over the years with their album titles, uh, hence their most recent example, their latest album from last year, Detour de Force. So, and yes, so that concludes my Bare Naked Ladies discography. And then we have a CD that was in, I believe, my honorable mentions from 2020. This is Gary Barlow. He is a member of Take That, a the British uh, boy band. They're now a man band. Uh, they're still going strong after a hiatus in the uh, late 90s, early 2000s. This is his most recent solo album, Music Played by Humans. Very good stuff. Kind of a blend uh, between pop and adult contemporary pop, I guess you'd say. That's probably not a very good explanation, but it's the one I'm going to go with. Then we have uh, an artist by the name of Dave Barnes, and he is, I believe he does, more or less does Christian music, but it's not kind of the, it's not like the pra praise and worship, high octane Christian music, as I like to call it. This has more subtle uh, lyrical content, but uh, still, this is a, this is an excellent album. Uh, Chasing Mississippi is the name of this one. And what, oh, what is the good song on here? Oh, All That Noise is a great, great song, and uh, Everybody But You is also another excellent one. And uh, this was actually released as a, uh, this was on an independent label, I believe, but he, also, he, after this, he kind of went briefly into a major label career. He got picked up by a major label and did a few albums. And I believe he is still recording, as far as I know. And now we have a, uh, I mentioned in my first chapter that I have a bit of a penchant for the International Idol franchises. I, I went on a little bit of a collecting binge at one point for inter international idols, and this is one from Brazil, I believe. Uh, his name is Rafael Barreto, and this is his debut album. He won one of the year, one of the seasons of the Brazilian version of Idol. Good stuff, nice. Uh, not heavily Brazilian. It's more, uh, you know, regular Western pop, just with uh, uh, sung in Portuguese, which is one of my fa one of my favorite languages uh, uh, that. Uh, songs can be sung in. I love listening to Portuguese in song. It's just there's something about it. And then one of my favorite uh, artists from the 80s, although these are actually reissues, uh, multi-disc reissues with bonus tracks, b-sides and stuff, we have Basha. This is her debut album Time and Tide and it's got, uh, as I said, two discs with a whole bunch of extras on it. And then her sophomore album London Warsaw New York. Uh, you guys might not recognize the cover of Time and Tide, because this was the uh, European cover. The American release had a different cover. And, but, this, this, but this is the cover from a uh, worldwide cover of London, Warsaw, New York. And her third album, which this one came a little, way, a little bit of time afterwards, so I didn't think they were going to do an expanded edition of this one, but they did. Her third album, The Sweetest Illusion, and this one is actually three discs. Um, yeah, disc one is the regular album with a couple of single edits. Disc, disc two is the the entire album instrumental, along with a couple other bonus tracks, and disc three is remixes and alternate versions. So yeah, they kind of went all out on that that release there. And then we have one of the most recent additions to my collection, John Baptiste, with his uh, most recent album We Are, his album from last year, which is up for al an album of the year Grammy for this year. So fantastic album, I gotta say. So many great, uh, so many different genres. Uh, mixed up in that album, we got you got jazz, you got pop, you got hip hop, everything in between. It's a great album. Then we have BB Mac. This is a Irish, I believe, uh, boy band from back in the early two thousands, and this is the uh, European release of their sophomore album, Into Your Head, and uh, Out of My Heart, which is 
basically the title track because the, the album title Into Your Head is uh, where the Out of My Heart is where they get the album title is what I'm trying to say. So in a way it's the title track. It was a fantastic song, the best on the album. But yeah, this whole album was just wonderful. This, this is kind of one of my not so guilty pleasures. I didn't think much of their debut album, but this one was excellent. And then we have a an all-time classic album, Pet Sounds by the Beach Boys. Gotta have the Beach Boys in here. Uh, although that's the only... Oh, actually, I was going to say that that's the only... Well, that is the only Beach Boys studio album that I have. I do have their Greatest Hits collection, Sounds of Summer. Um, I like the Beach Boys, just not that much. Then we have an obscurity in my collection that I think I talked about. Yes, it was in my list of favorite albums from the 2000s. This is a group called Beast, and it is a Canadian duo. They kind of go uh, do industrial rock, industrial metal, along with some hip-hop influences and a little bit of jazz uh, inflections on it and stuff. Just a, ve a very, very, very interesting listen. And uh, Mr. Hurricane is my favorite song off the album. And this, as I don't know if you can see or not, but this is in one of the uh, yellow-tinted CD cases. So. But, uh, yeah, very excellent and hard-to-describe band is Beast. And speaking of Beast, we have the Beastie Boys. This is uh, their greatest, greatest hits album, Solid Gold Hits. Uh, and that's about as much as I care to like the Beastie Boys, really. And then we have <clears throat> the only Beatles that I have on CD are their two double disc greatest hits album, the uh, 1962 to 66, which uh, I originally got it in the chubby uh, case, but I uh, transplanted it into the single width dual case. And then 67, uh, 1967, 1970, the, the blue one, which I also transplanted. I like to save shelf space when I can, you know. And then on we go into, on we go into a drink first. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now on we go into Beck. I have a fair, so fairly good, uh, I have most of Beck's albums, not quite all of them. We're starting off here with Mellow Gold. And then Odelay, one of his best albums. And mutations. A lot of these I've only listened to once or twice, so I need to uh, absorb these more to see if there are any that I'm not particularly fond of and are f and feeling maybe like getting rid of. But uh, I do like most of them. Uh, Midnight Vultures is this one. Then we have Sea Change. Then we have Ghetto, and this one is a little bit. Uh, I don't know if you can see, but the uh, back insert is kind of water damaged. The CD is in decent sh decent shape, but uh, the insert's not in perfect shape. And then we have the information, which I think I, I think I do have the uh, decals and stuff here. I just have not done any, anything with customizing the cover. For some reason, I want to main, maintain its pristine quality. And then uh, moving along, we have Modern Guilt. Beck is one of those artists where you you can't listen to any of his albums just once or twice. You really have to absorb them to see if they if they grow on you over time. Uh, Morning Phase, one of his most recent albums, and then the most recent album of his, of his that I have, Colors, which was one of my favorite albums of its year. I love the you know. Amongst Beck purists, this is probably not one of his favorite albums, but I love the 80s synth stuff, so this one is right up my alley. Love, love this album. And I also have, um, when I have CD singles by an artist, I have them at the end of the uh, of their discography, uh, you know, in my collection. I, I don't have them interspersed with the albums. So this is one single that I have, uh, Loser, and it's got a couple of... Uh, uh, B-sides on it that were not on the album, so one reason I have it. Can't remember where I, where I found that one. And then we have the Bee Gees, uh, some disco from the 70s. This is their greatest hits album. Uh, and again, this is yet another one where it was originally in a chubby case and I transplanted it into a single width case. I uh, bought this one from my man Noah. He, uh, I think it was in his Discog, Discogs inventory, so I 
decided to go ahead and buy it. And then, uh, then here's one that I almost dropped. Uh, it's uh, you probably saw it in a uh, bargain bag video months ago. Beggars, their self-titled album. I like that one. I have weeded out some of the, uh, as you might be able to tell through the course of this collection, some of the uh, uh, bargain bag keepers. I ended up weeding out a little ways down the road, uh, but that one's one that I kept, obviously. Then we have stuff from the 50s and 60s, Harry Belafonte, the essential Harry Belafonte. A great calypso, and uh, he, he kind of goes into the Latin and reggae uh, fields, sort of. But the, uh, one of my mother's favorite artists is Harry Belafonte, so really enjoy enjoy that one, kind of by osmosis, I guess you'd say. And then we have the Ben Folds Five, uh, Whatever and Ever, Amen. Very good, a good solid pop rock album from the 90s? Yeah, 1997, I think. And we're almost halfway done here. Uh, now this one, I have two or three of her studio albums on vinyl, but I still am not ready to give up the CD of her greatest hits, Pat Benatar, one of the foremost rock, female rock stars from the 80s. Great stuff. I love her stuff. Uh, yes, this is an entry in the Icon series, uh, series, obviously. And here we come to the halfway point in today's discography, and uh, yeah, 21 and a half minutes uh, in terms of the recording video, uh, recording counter, whatever you call it, the little, the little timer that's down there on my screen, which you probably can't see because only I see it. Anyway, Tony Bennett. Uh, we're starting off our Tony Bennett collection with a, an album, uh, I Left My Heart in San Francisco. It's a classic album from the 60s. I found this one at, I believe it was at the Habitat for Humanity Restore in, uh, was it in Stillwater or was it in Bartlesville? I can't remember, but uh, yeah. Found that, got that one in Oklahoma, so yeah. As I move. You heard that, sort of. Anyway, that is the first half of my CD collection for today, chapter two. But we're not done with Tony Bennett. Now, this next one here, um, I'm going to be doing a separate video for the box sets that I have. So this one almost qualifies as a box set, but I actually bought the CDs individually. I uh, actually bought them from Skips before he closed, uh, the $2 section of Skips. So, uh, and I, so I put them in my own four disc uh, CD case and made my own inserts for them. This is Tony Bennett, uh, 40 Years, The Artistry of Tony Bennett. It's uh, a, a four disc seat set that originally came in a box set, uh, probably had a book with it but I just bought the CDs individually from Skip's $2 section, so I made my own insert. And uh, you can kind of see the uh, track listing there. I even, even downloaded the uh, Sony Legacy logo from, from the web and put the copyright info in there because I'm a geek and I want to make it look as official as I, as I can. But uh, yeah, a good collection. Uh, if you want a, a nice distilled, well, as distilled as four discs of it can be, uh, selection of Tony Bennett's hits, that's the way to go. One of the best uh, classic pop singers of all time, hands down. Fight me, I, I fight me, and I will, well, disagree with you, I guess. Uh, then we go into we're going into Tony Bennett's uh, duets work, and I have, well, mostly duets. There's another. Um, I have quite a few of his duets albums. I don't know if I have all of them, but uh, first off, we have Tony Bennett and Katie Lang, A Wonderful World. Katie Lang's voice. You wouldn't think you wouldn't think that Katie Lang's voice would would merge well with Tony Bennett's, but it does. This is a great album, fantastic album. And it's got a lot of the uh, Great American Songbook standards in it that uh, Tony Bennett was famous for in his career. Then I got a couple of, uh, uh, well, a couple of, for, forget, I, just ignore me, I'm just gonna go on. I don't know what I was about to say. Anyway, I have Tony Bennett's Un MTV Unplugged album. and. Yet another venue that you wouldn't think Tony Bennett would thrive in, but this kind of launched a bit of a comeback for him, ironically, in the uh, in the 90s. Uh, but yes, wonderful, wonderful album. I've got several of the Unplugged albums, um, the MTV Unplugged series, and uh, it's, it's right up there with the best of them. Go figure. And then we have another uh, duets album here, uh, a, a Various Artists duets album, Tony Bennett, um, Playing with my friends, Bennett sings the blues, and we've got Ray Charles, Natalie Cole, Cheryl Crow, Billy Joel, BB King, Diana Krall, 
Katie Lang, Bonnie Raitt, K Star, and Stevie Wonder all appear on this album. And considering that list of guest artists, it's every bit as good as you would think it would be. Fantastic. And I bought this, I think I got this at Epic Seconds uh, just a few months back, uh, three or four months ago. And I didn't realize it was there was such a good album, a good Tony Bennett album that I didn't have yet. But then we're going into... Hmm. My throat's getting dry. i got to drink again. Iced tea. I'm recording this video in the morning. Usually when I do my videos, it's at night, and I'm only drinking water second half of the day. So you get to see a rare instance of me drinking iced tea. Trivia note. Anyway, we have uh, one of the more popular duets albums, and this is another Various Artists Duets uh, album, simply called Duets. And this was one of his most successful albums in his entire career, I believe. And so successful, in fact, that it prompted a sequel, Duets 2, just as good as the first one. And yes, so many good artists appear on this album. Lady Gaga, which kind of prompted her duets albums with him later on. The Dixie Chicks, Barbara Streisand, James Taylor, Paul McCartney, Michael Bublé, Amy Winehouse, Katie Lang, Aretha Franklin, Willie Nelson, Queen Lativa, Elvis Costello, Celine Dion, Tim McGraw, Sting, Bono, and I didn't even name half of them. So, yeah. A who's who of popular music has duetted with Tony Bennett, and even on each individual album, a who's who. So it's fantastic. And I just mentioned Lady Gaga a couple minutes ago. Got their album Cheek to Cheek. Wonderful stuff. And again, talk about an artist that you wouldn't think would thrive in such a completely different genre from the stuff that she usually does is Lady Gaga. She has a gorgeous voice, and it's so well suited to that uh, classic uh, standard pop stuff. I just I, I never would have imagined. And then we have one of my favorite albums from its year, uh, because Diana Krall is one of my sister's favorite artists. She teamed up with Tony Bennett for a. Uh, oh, this is I. I they were all songs written by the same p person or people. I can't remember. Uh, but yes, uh, "Love Is Here to Stay" uh, is the name of that album. Wonderful stuff. And here she has. She revisits her uh, partnership with Tony with. Uh, Lady Gaga, that's what I'm trying to say, I think. Uh, yes, Love for Sale, their uh, Lady Gaga and Tony Bennett's most recent duets album last year. Uh, even I think that one's even a little bit better than uh, their first pairing, because she was able to um, reel in her voice a little bit more. She broke into pop diva moments a bit on their first team up, but on this one she was much more subtle, much more nuanced in her vocal delivery. And then, finally, moving on from Tony Bennett, we come to Brendan Benson. He is a member of the Tours. That is probably his biggest claim to fame, but he's done several so uh, solo albums. This is my favorite, but only by default, because it's the only one of his uh, solo albums that I have. Uh, it is called The Alternative to Love. Fantastic stuff on here. Great, great uh, singer-songwriter pop tunes. And this one, uh, you also saw this one in my favorite albums of the 2000s list. Jukebox by Bent Fabric. Uh, this is uh, modern interpretations of Bent Fabric's jazz standards from the 40s and 50s and 60s. Uh, got a bunch of uh, producers to put some uh, contemporary beats on them and a bunch of vocalists to do some singing in the songs. So yeah, it's just a real, very, very fun reinvention of Bent, Bent Fabric's jazz stuff from the 60s. Uh, it was put out in 2005, I believe. So yeah, if you want a party album on a single CD, can't go wrong with that. And uh, this one is, it, it's kind of a novelty album, but I did not put it with my comedy and spoken word uh, because it is strictly music. Although now that I think of it, I put Weird Al in my comedy and spoken word, even though he is strictly music. But anyway, that's one thing that you might find amusing about the way I uh, keep my CDs is my inconsistency is rather consistent. But anyway, uh, Chant Mania. This is uh, a takeoff on the uh, the Gregorian chants uh, trend that was popular in the early 90s, I believe it was. And yes, this is the Benzedrine monks of Santo Domonica. Uh, yes, they do some... Uh, <laughs> the Gregorian chants albums, uh, some of you guys won't get this reference, but the Gregorian chants albums were, of course, 
old uh, medieval Gregorian chants, but these guys take some, uh, do the uh, Gregorian chant treatment on modern day songs like the theme from the monkeys and We Will Rock You, Losing My Religion, the REM song, Smells Like Teen Spirit, uh, Rod Stewart's Do You Think I'm, I'm Sexy, and uh, <laughs> yes, this is a six track EP, and uh, if you can read track six, The Monk's Vow of Silence. Yes, it's a blank track. Very clever, huh? So yes. I should probably put this with my comedy and spoken word because it is straight up, straight up comedy. It, it's pretty hilarious. But uh, yeah, I couldn't help pick that one up uh, when I saw it. So I saw it used uh, just a few years back, I think. Uh, so you, so no, I didn't buy it new back in the day. But anyway, and now moving on to Chuck Berry. I have the Definitive Collection. Uh, I have several albums in this Definitive Collection series of various artists. Uh, when you're looking for a crash course on the roots of rock and roll, Chuck Berry is a must listen. You've got to uh, school yourself on Chuck Berry if you love rock and roll. And in this one I actually found in on the, on the freebie shelf, this is a CD and DVD set of Chuck Berry, uh, Hail Hell Rock and Roll, which is a documentary movie about Chuck Berry, and it also has a CD of his uh, some of his greatest hits. So the CD is fairly redundant, but uh, the DVD was very interesting, although the it was not the most professionally done documentary I've ever seen because the sound was rather inconsistent. Uh, I, ha I kept having to turn the volume up and down. Uh, I had trouble hearing some of the uh, some of the um, people speaking. So, but still a very interesting documentary on Chuck Berry. <clears throat> and I'm running out of space to put the CDs. And I'm down to the final 30 CDs in today's video. This video is going to be a bit shorter than the uh, my first chapter, I think. Uh, moving on with Chuck Berry, we have an album from the from the 80s, I believe, called Rocket. This was like his first so studio album in Oh, it was from 1979 is the original date. This was like his first studio album in probably 15 or 20 years, I think. I probably got that number wrong, but uh, this was uh, for sale from the Varez Saraband website. Uh, this is actually a Varez vintage CD. They, they did a, an imprint with uh, classic rock and pop uh, albums, and so that's where I got that one was. It was on sale for like two bucks, and so I got that along with like six other albums. So pretty good stuff. And then we have, uh, sadly, his swan song, his last album before, before his passing. Uh, this album was released in 2017, simply called Chuck. He went out with an absolute bang. I mean, he went out at the top of his game, unquestionably. Some great, great rock hits on there. Pardon me as I slightly rearrange stuff on my desk. Now we're getting into an artist that is one of my favorites from the, uh, from the 90s. I have... Uh, I believe they're a complete discography of studio albums, that is. Better than Ezra. I love these guys. They're just uh, fantastic. And the, the lead singer, they're from uh, New Orleans, or at least from Louisiana. And the lead singer has just kind of a kind of a beefy baritone voice that uh, is very distinctive. And uh, I just that's just one of the reasons why I love their stuff. This is their um, major label debut album, Deluxe. Excellent stuff. Um, the song Good was, I believe, their biggest hit, their most successful song. So uh, if, you, if you've heard any song by Better Than Ezra, you've heard that one. And uh, so yeah, good, good stuff. Moving on to their sophomore album, Friction Baby. And this one, what was the... Oh, Desperately Wanting was the big, uh, most successful single off of that album. This one is my least favorite of, the al of their albums, but it's like, if I don't have it, I don't have their complete discography. So how does your garden grow? Uh, it's got its moments, like every Better Than Ezra album does, but uh, it is, I think, their weakest effort. This next one took them in a bit of a, a bit of a hip hop direction, you know, not not so much that it would turn off their, um, their their listeners to date, but still a bit of an a bit of a diver divergence of sorts. Closer is the name of this album, and I believe I picked that one up in, in Oklahoma on my outings there. Then we have their next album after that, Before the Robots. Uh, this this was one of their best albums. Um, the song American Dream. Listen to that one. That is more pertinent now than ever. Great, great song. And uh, A Southern Thing, that was a pretty good song as well. And 
and uh, yeah, good. Yeah. And then the next one, this one, uh, it kind of, this was the album that kind of uh, helped me get back into Better Than Ezra. I'd kind of fallen off of them, and I, confession, I actually went back and rebought some of these albums uh, that I had missed out on the first time because of this album, Paper Empire. Uh, an excellent album, uh, underrated, independently released after they uh, kind of went out on their own. Uh, absolutely still, all in. Uh, Hell No is another really good song. And uh, yeah, just a surprisingly good album, I guess, just because I had I had fallen off of them for a while, and so I was not expecting that to be so good. And then their most recent album, All Together Now, uh, and that's a nice solid effort. And this one was from 2014, so I've, I'm kind of waiting for their next album to come out. <clears throat> and then we have uh, a one-shot album from an artist. I don't think they put out another album since then, uh, since they did this one. It's an artist called Big City Rock, and their name basically fits them well. They have you know nice a nice rock sound, kind a bit of an arena rock sound with some some synthesizers in it. So in a way, they're kind of a progenitor. Because I'm not sure if uh, they came out before the Killers first album, but they remind me a little bit, at least, of the Killers. Kind of that that rock sound, but with a little bit of synth in it, a little bit of '80s gloss, I guess you'd say. But uh, yeah, so many good songs on here. Uh, All of the above, Human, and uh, oh, Kind is another good song. So yeah, very very good stuff. Uh, if you're looking for the really obscure stuff that. Uh, you're not familiar with and you want to maybe surprise yourself, check that album out if you can find it. Now this artist, I used to have several of their albums uh, on CD, but I actually, their earlier albums I picked up on vinyl and decided to trade in the CDs. So uh, as of now, this is the only album of theirs that I have on vinyl, on CD. Big Country with their album The Buffalo Skinners. This is like their sixth album, I believe. And the song on here called We're Not in Kansas one of my all-time favorite songs and it's it's kind of a sprawling thing it's like five and a half six minutes long but it doesn't really it doesn't outstay its welcome it's just it's got great lyrics it's it's in a way it's kind of like the song american dream that better than ezra did kind of the same sort of uh the same subject matter i guess you'd say the the same mood in the lyrics but yeah check out we're not in kansas by big country and an in interesting that they would have a song with that title because they are a scottish band and then we have a Canadian idol, uh, and I believe he was, I think he was the winner of his year. He might have been the runner-up, but uh, interesting for a Canadian idol. He is in the country genre. Uh, J.D. Bixby, uh, this is his debut album, Cowboys and Cadillacs. I, I sought out his sophomore album for a while, but uh, just never got around to picking it up. But uh, yeah, good stuff. He's got a good voice. And then we have uh, Black Sabbath, Paranoid. This is one I found off the freebie shelf, so the CD is a little bit scuffed up, but it plays well. And so, yeah, this is an album. It surprised me how good this album was. Uh, this, this was my first listening experience with Black Sabbath. Really enjoyed it. Uh, so I am probably going to seek out other albums by them and maybe uh, upgrade this one to a, a non-scuffed CD. Maybe. I've gotten to be, have a little bit more tolerance for um, CDs that are not... Uh, aesthetically perfect, you know. And they, like I said, they play just fine, so you know. Pardon me. And then we have a CD that I, I think I talked about these guys before. Sorry, I was bouncing on here and made the camera bounce a little bit. Black Violin. Uh, these guys are um, African American duo, uh, classically trained violinists, but they incorporate hip hop and R&B into their music, and I, I picked this one up just on chance. I, I think I might have listened to a couple of clips before I picked this one up, but they intrigue me so much. I, As I've mentioned before, I love it when um, an artist incorporates two very different genres into it, into, you know, into one and blends it together into, uh, you know, and comes up with something completely different, and that's what this is. This is their album Stereotypes, and a very... Uh, the title has some real meaning behind it. Um, and yes, fantastic album. I love this album. One of my favorite um, hard to pin down genre-wise albums. And then uh, this one, 
This is one that I do have on vinyl, but uh, the CD has such significance to me that I decided to keep it. Here we have uh, Strange Desire by Bleachers, their debut album, of course. And uh, those of you who have watched me long enough know that uh, my, my man, my little brother Noah, this is an album that he and I bonded over. Uh, you can see me talk about it in a joint video that I did with, with Noah. Uh, uh, I was going to say a few months back. It's been about six months ago. It was a uh, uh, my first take on the uh, Album Diaries uh, video, which I plan on bringing Album Diaries back. I'm, I'm still wanting to do that. I just haven't gotten around to doing so. But uh, yes, an excellent album. I've just I've just fallen fallen in love with Bleachers. Uh, they put out some great music, and uh, yeah, I guess I can show this one too uh, because it's it's actually a mix CD that Noah sent me. Bleachers B sides. So it's a bunch of uh, well, it's a bunch of B sides, uh, some non-album tracks, some covers, uh, some remixes, and stuff from a variety of different sources. Being the uh, Jack Antonoff stand that Noah is. Uh, he sourced these songs from goodness knows how many places, so that's a, a very wonderful gift that I will treasure forever in my collection, so yes, fantastic stuff. And then we get into an artist called Blessed Union of Souls. Uh, you guys may have heard of them. I've mentioned them before on my channel. And was it this one? I can't remember if it was this one or the sophomore album that was in a bargain bag at some point, and that's kind of where I got started and checking them out. This is their debut album, Home. Wonderful stuff. And uh, I think before I had any of their studio albums, I had a Greatest Hits album of theirs and really enjoyed it, but never got around to checking out their studio albums. But when I got one of them from Bargain Bag, that got the ball rolling. And so this is their sophomore album, self-titled. A bunch of other, bunch of great songs on there. And then this one I picked up in Oklahoma, I believe. I think so. Uh, their third album, uh, Walking Off the Buzz. And just, uh, yeah. What can I see? Some great songs on it. And yeah, this is a, it's a multiracial group. So some African-American members, some white members, and there could be um, a member of, I, there might be an Asian member in there also. I'm not sure. But yes, a great mix of R&B, pop, rock. Um, kind of a milder version, in a way, of Hootie and the Blowfish. A bit, a bit folkier than Hootie and the Blowfish, if you can think of such a thing. But uh, yes, the song, I believe, is fantastic. And uh, yes, I'm trying to look through the uh, track listings, but cannot uh, remember songs off the top of my head. Now, the Walking Off the Buzz got a little bit more poppy. Uh, the song, That's the Girl I've Been Telling You About, is one of the more uh, earwormy songs on that album, as well as Hey Leonardo. That's another good one. But uh, yeah, a very, very good band. And then we're going to uh, another artist uh, by whom I have three albums. This is a singer-songwriter named Blue. Uh, his real name is Blue Magali. He's an American uh, singer-songwriter. A bit, uh, I was going to say kind of like Beck, but not quite as, what do you want to say, janky? Is that the word? Uh, a sound as Beck, at least in his earlier days. Uh, Blue is much more, more, a little bit more singer-songwriter kind of stuff. Uh, maybe kind of like Ben Folds, I guess. Maybe more so Ben Folds than Beck. But anyway, great uh, singer-songwriter, pop rock stuff. This is his debut album, Redhead. And it's got some great uh, stuff on here. That's When I Crash is a great song on here. We'll Do It All Again is another fantastic one. And, uh, yeah, and this is actually the Japanese version, which has got a couple of uh, bonus tracks in here. Got the Obi strip there. And then uh, that one was released on the Columbia label, I believe. And then he went indie because I guess a major label didn't know what to do with him, or didn't think he was uh, commercial enough, I guess. And as far as I'm concerned, it's the major label's loss. This is uh, his, I don't know if this is his directly subsequent album to Redhead, but uh, it's called A Watch a Watched Pot. That's fantastic stuff. Uh, Boy Meets Girl is one of my favorite songs ever. It's a song about music, or at least it, it references uh, musicians and artists in the lyrics. So yes, it's a fantastic song. Um, and I can't remember what any of the other good songs on here were, but uh, this one was produced by John Fields. So yes, a big name producer, even though this was on a independent label. 
And then the third album of his that I have is called Four. So, and this is yet another really good album. Uh, when the Shit Hits the Fan is uh, one of the better songs on here. And uh, I'll, know, I'll Know It When I See It, is, I think, is another really good one. Uh, Evil Twin and You Catch More Flies With Honey Than With Vinegar. And Singing in Tongues is the opening track. Good stuff on here. If you like good um, singer-songwriter rock pop, check out Blue. I think you might be impressed. And then we're going back to the classics here with Blood, Sweat, and Tears. This album was in my sister's CD collection, so I'm very, very happy to own it. And this is the remastered edition with a couple of bonus tracks on here, a couple of live cuts. So, yeah. I had never bothered checking out Blood, Sweat, and Tears until I got that CD. Good stuff. And then we have something from the 90s. We have Blues Traveler with their most famous album, Four. Uh, so, so interesting. I, it just now occurred to me that I have two albums with the name of Four almost right next to each other. Blood, Sweat, and Tears was right in between them. But yes, uh, The Runaround, Stand, um, and who oh, was the other one? Oh, Hook is uh, another one on here. So yes, they're, they're their most, most popular hits were from that album. And then let's uh, let's dive into a little bit of opera, shall we? As we wind down to... Oh, I've only got about six CDs left, but i got to take another drink. Sorry. The throat gets kind of dry talking about music for so long. And now we're getting into a little bit of opera, or popera, as if you will. Andrea Bocelli with his album C. And this one I mentioned in... Uh, it was in a video recently. I can't remember what it was. But uh, his... Oh yeah, his holiday album, which I had in... I think it was in a bargain bag or somewhere. Don't remember where I got that one. Uh, I can't even try to test my memory. But yes, I had gotten his holiday album... Uh, which prompted me to check out his discogra discography online, and I found that this album has uh, appearances by Ed Sheeran, Dua Lipa, and Josh Groban on it. So I decided to go ahead and pick it up. Very good album, I gotta say. Lots of fun. And uh, I, I might actually end up delving a little bit more into Andrea Bocelli. I don't know, but I might. Now this artist, um, I believe I happened upon this artist through a CD sampler that would come every month with a music magazine called Paste. And the, the print magazine is no longer in existence, uh, but I believe they have it, they still have a website. So I, you know they might have a, an internet magazine, or it might just be the website without a, a monthly thing or whatever. But yeah, back in the day, before uh, streaming music or getting music online was really a thing, they would include a mix CD and this artist was on the mix CD at one point, I believe, if my memory serves. This is Jim Bogia, and this is his album Safe in Sound. And this is, uh, I've kind of been looking for the, for the legit retail version of this. This is just an uh, advanced album, uh, well, not a sampler, but uh, the advanced promo release. Uh, but yeah, some great stuff in here. What was the song that was um, on the uh, sample? Oh, Made Me So Happy. Uh, the, the hook of the song is, you've made me so happy I've got nothing else to sing. So, so in a way, it's a, it's a song about music. So that, that, that's kind of what caught my ear with Jim Bogia. And so, yes, great a great sense of humor, sometimes self-deprecating, sometimes uh, poignant in a way. But yeah, very good, very catchy songs on here. So yes, uh, if you like that, you know, um, catchy uh, singer-songwriter stuff, a little bit on the pop side, Check out Jim Bosha. He's really good. And we close out the this chapter of my CD collection with Michael Bolton. Yay. Hey, life's too short to be a music snob, and I'm not ashamed to have Michael Bolton. It's just, yes, he's the kind of the punchline, but you have to admit, he's got a voice that... His voice has balls, you know? He's the only singer who sings from his balls, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> take that for what you will. Anyway, this is his album, Soul Provider. Uh, and yes, he, he mostly sings ballads, but when he hits those high notes, he just, he goes through the roof, you have to admit. But uh, yes, Georgia On My Mind, he does a great cover of that one on here. Uh, How Can We Be Lovers is one of his, uh, one of his originals, I believe, one of the more popular songs. Uh, when I'm Back on My Feet Again, another really good song. So, hey, the guys put out a lot of really good songs, you have to admit. Uh, cheesy as though he might be. This is his album, Time, Love, and Tenderness. 
the song Love is a Wonderful Thing, which uh, has caused this album to no longer be in print because he got uh, cop uh, sued for a copyright infringement for uh, supposedly copying this song. And so I guess part of the settlement was uh, this song cannot be on any compilations or, or cannot be sold at retail anymore. So this album is out of print and he, can he cannot include the song Love is a Wonderful Thing on any of his compilations. So interesting trivia note. But hey, I think it's a really, really fun song. It's one of my favorite Michael Bolton songs, ironically. Uh, Time, Love, and Tenderness, the title track is great as well. And When a Man Loves a Woman, he does a cover of the Percy Sledge classic. So, uh, good stuff. And then a couple of uh, albums where he covers uh, classic pop songs. Uh, Timeless, uh, Volume 1 and Volume 2. Timeless, the classics. Uh, to Love Somebody and reach out, I'll be there, hold on, I'm coming, knock on wood, drift away, uh, tired of being alone, and let's stay together, a couple of uh, Al Green classics, uh, my girl ain't no sunshine, what a wonderful world. So, I am a sucker for those covers albums, I have to admit. So anyway, that is the end of this chapter of playlist, or uh, this chapter of my CD collection got my brain stuck in the playlist mode so yes I hope you guys have enjoyed this series of videos I've had lots of fun bringing them to you and by the way uh, if there's anything that uh, you're surprised to not see in my collection that you think I should know about or you think I should uh, at least listen to give me uh, let me know about it in, in the comments section I might have it in some other format uh, you know I, I might have it in my uh, digitally or on vinyl but yeah let me know I'm always uh, up for you know recommendations I may not have the time to listen to them at least not for a long time but uh, yes I always like uh, hearing about what moves other people the the art the artists and albums that move other people so anyway that'll do it for this video my uh, my whole CD collection chapter 2 I hope you enjoyed this video if so hit that like button and share it with your friends and give me your thoughts questions suggestions or constructive criticisms in the comment section below also, scroll down to the description for the links to my Twitter and Instagram feeds and links to my favorite fellow YouTubers who are all worth checking out. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and browse my past videos and be sure to ring that notifications bell so you'll be the first to know each time I drop a new video or go live. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. See ya!